Hello, and welcome to a tutorial for Unity Character Customization. This tool works with Unity 2018.4 and up, and any render pipeline. In this example, we will use a popular character, PP801 by Kuang Fan, and we will set this character up so that it can be customized with the system. This character requires Unity 2019.4.9 and the high definition render pipeline. So, first we will make a new project. I made a Unity 2020 project, this HDFP and we need to import the character customization system and the character PP801. If you use multiple Kuang Fan characters, you will need to import them into a different project and copy over the relevant things that aren't duplicated because those characters have duplicate scripts. Now that we've done that, we need to add for our demo into build settings. So for the character customization system, these are the game, gender, male, and female scenes. So we're going to add these in. And if you had uh, the sample scene in the build settings, you can remove that. Now. Let's go into the game. And what you'll notice is that a lot of the materials are pink and things look wrong. And this is because the character customization system was built with the universal render pipeline. So the demo scenes are, are done that way. What we can do is first verify that the system is working. We can do this by pressing play, customizing the character, selecting the male gender, and we'll see our character Kyle. And we can do things like add the head onto Kyle and modify its body, even though it doesn't show up correctly. But we can see the system is working. So let's go into our game scene, copy over the content of the game scene, and make a brand new scene. Don't save. Paste the content of that scene. And from our pasted scene, we can remove the camera and the lighting, keep everything else as it is. And now for the new camera that we had, make sure that its position is negative 2 so that we're closer to the character in the demo. Let's go ahead and hit File, Save, Character Customization, Character Customization System, Scenes, and we're going to override our game scene. Now, let's go into our mail scene, copy the content, make a new scene. This is just to make sure that everything looks correctly. Again, we delete the main camera, the directional lighting. For this camera, we can set it to negative 3. We'll go in, save this, character customization, system, scenes, mail, override. You can also do that with the female and the gender, but for now, this is sufficient. Back into the game, and we're going to hit play. And you'll notice that our character looks a little bit nicer. There's Kyle. But some things still don't show up correctly. It doesn't matter because we will be replacing all of these parts and this character with PP801. So in order to make PP801 work with the system, what we need to do is create a character base. The base is basically an empty character with just the body structure, the relevant scripts, colliders, and such, but no actual skinned mesh renders because we will be adding and removing those as we're customizing the character make a brand new scene, just so we're not modifying anything in our existing scene. Now, inside PP801, we will find the prefab play. Play prefab is nice because it already has some example scenes for a third person controller and animator and, and all that. Now, we have a tool that'll allow us to create prefabs for a system. It doesn't work for every single character, but it's a great start. And if it doesn't work, you can always manually do the same steps. So in character customization, the prefab generator is a nice editor window. What you need to do is you need to drag in the full character, and you need to drag in the root. Now, if we try to just generate the character base right now, we're going to run into an error. And this is because we don't actually have the proper folder to generate the character into. So what we need to do is we need to have a generated assets folder inside a character customization. And I just went and made one. Not inside the system, but inside character customization. Because we didn't have that folder, what ended up happening is our character base, which is this right here, got created in the scene, but never saved to a location, which is fine too. We can drag it in and create the prefab. But for a proper flow, now that we have the folder, we can go ahead and delete this and instead try to generate again. And what you'll notice is it created the prefab into that folder. The other thing that we'll see is the guns, which are skin mesh renders, are actually part of our base. And we don't want this. The reason we don't want it is because then they cannot be removed and added because they always exist. They're not an outfit. So let's go inside here. This is going to be common for weapons, and this is how some characters in the access store are created. In order to mitigate this problem, we can go into the guns and just turn off their skin mesh renders. And now we can exit the preview. Now that we have our base, what we also want to do is, well, we can take that base and we're going to drag it into our prefabs for the system. So you'll notice Kyle already had a base, which is the Unity character we were using for the demo. We'll rename this to old. And we'll take our new base and we'll drag it in here. Now, this base needs to be referenced by every script that spawns in the system. And there are several locations for this. They're all in our scenes. 
Let's go into the game scene. We don't need to save that. Character spawning. References are old Kyle base. We needed to reference the new base. Drag it over and save. Same for the mail. Instead of referencing Kyle's base, referencing the PP base. And the exact same thing for our female scene. For the female scene, we only really care about the female. But for consistency, making sure things are clean, let's just do this too. And gender doesn't actually have spawning because all it's doing is, is toggling between your uh, options. We also need to create outfits to put on the base because Kyle's outfits won't work because he's got a different bone structure. He's a different character. And this is why we want to um, make parts. So similar approach, we make a new scene. We find our example prefab from PP801. Now, again, using our generator tool, we're going to drag in the character and the root conveniently named root. Now, before we create the pieces, there are some unique things that need to be done. The pieces shouldn't have all of these extra components the way the base does. So just remove it the way we can, like this. We're just going to go through and remove all of them. Now, don't save it because you will modify this prefab. We're only doing this while we are generating our stuff. So now that this is done, we can go and generate pieces. Remember, we're doing this for the male character. For the female, we would toggle the check mark off. And there we go. We just went and created a variety of different pieces. Some of them are really granular, like a beard, shoes, hands, head, the shirt, the necklace. And we would need to do this for the different variations of this character too, because there's, there's a lot of those, the different kinds of shirts and different kinds of shoes and, and all of that. But for the demonstration purpose, we split this up and it's sufficient. Now we can go ahead and delete this without having tampered with that actual prefab. Back in the system, we can go into the game. Now, before we start playing, now that we have these pieces, we can also make another folder just so we can organize everything nicely. And we'll call this 801 P2 pieces. And from within our character's customization system, we can take all of these pieces and drag them out just so we don't confuse them with ones that we've already finished generating and new, one, new things that we might generate in the future. The pieces are there. Now we need to make the actual outfit. An outfit can be multiple pieces or a single piece, and the way they are set up is in our resources. You'll notice that Kyle already had a bunch of these outfits, um, a head, so on and so forth. Now, our PP character also has a head. We can just say male head. We can use the existing icon for now until your artist creates the corresponding images, or we can generate icons, but we'll just keep using these ones. We'll use the same category, but now for the head, we don't want to use Kyle's head. We want to use the prefab that we generated here. And there is a head here. Just finding it and drag it in. Now we have the head. And as far as this outfit is, is concerned, we're finished. But we need to do this for some of the other outfits too. So back in our resources, let's go into the body. We'll call this male body. You can call it whatever you like. Make an icon for it, a category. Now it doesn't have two pieces. We'll just give it a single piece. And what we can use for that is top body. There we go. Now. What can we do for arms? Since this character got split up in a way where the arms and the chest were together as one skin mesh render, we don't actually have arms, but we have hands. So we can call this and hands. We might rename the category as well. Now let's go find our hands and drag it in here. And there's also only one in the piece array. Now that the hands are done, we continue on. Legs, we didn't actually have skinned legs but what we did have is we had pants and that makes sense to put in this category too and here they are again it's just one this is going through and authoring all of these to demonstrate how easy it is to set up this character now body two instead of that we might have a shirt here the shirt that we generated now arms two let's go and use that for arms too. Hand machine. We can call it hand machine. It actually makes more sense for this to be together with the hand, but we can set that later to be sure. And finally, we had the legs too. Fabric shoes could work for legs too. So we'll call it shoes. Drag in fabric shoes. And it appears we're done. Now, we also have a matrix for the collisions. Right now, we want to turn off all of these because we're configuring a new character and none of the collisions make sense anymore. 
and we need to be vigilant to make sure that nothing is checked off here while we're testing all of this because otherwise anything that collides will be removing itself. We want to go inside our category for a moment here and make sure that none of our categories have any defaults because it's going to make it more difficult for us to set things up if everything is forced to be equipped and that's what defaults do. If, it, if there's only one thing in the category it auto equips it. Let's go back in the game, press play, now you'll see there is nothing. Let's go and customize a character. Since we already previously selected the male, it takes us right into the male instead of the gender selection. Now let's go, we can add the head for PP801, we can add the body, we can add the shirt, we can add the hands. Now, previously the way Kyle was configured, we had to discover some other stuff. But uh, we can, you know, discover it like we did and we can buy the outfits and now we have everything. I want to go in for a second and find our character. Here he is. Now when we add this, it's very subtle, but there's like an augmentation that gets added to the hand. But if we take off the hand, then this augmentation is floating. So what we might want to do is always have the hand associated with this piece when we're configuring. Finally, we can put on some pants and some shoes. We can hit save, we can hit done. And there it is, we have our character. There's a wide variety of variations with this character and the way that the 3D artist created this character. So we can change different shirts, we can put on different pants. In fact, we can swap this with other characters besides PP801, P2, like P1, like P3, like Berserk, anything else that Kuang Fang has set up because all his male characters are compatible with each other and all his female characters are compatible with each other. So you can use this asset to mix and match all of that. And just like that, we set up a character. But what we might want to do is we might want to make sure that something like the head can never be removed. So the way we do that is we make a category default. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. Please follow this process for creating different outfits, expanding on this character, trying out other characters. I hope you enjoy using the character customization system. For more information, please check out the documentation. Thank you very much.